We're now on BBC Radio 4. It's Valentine's Day and we present the sequel to Love Virtually, last year's story of love by email, starring Amelia Fox and David Tennant. This is an automatic degenerated delivery status notification. The recipient can no longer receive mail. Come on, Leo, it's been half a year. Hello? Hello? Huh, a reply. This is an automatically generated delivery... Oh, Leo, will this never stop? We present Every Seventh Wave by Daniel Glattower. Adapted for radio by Eileen Horn. Good morning, Mr. Systems Manager. I'm going to be honest with you. This is an emergency. I need the email of Leo Leica, and I need it badly. I have three questions I urgently need to ask him. One, is he alive? Two, is he still in Boston? Three, is he involved in an email relationship with someone else? If one and two are yes, I can forgive him. But I could never forgive number three. I really would mind very much if he had fallen in love by email with another woman he had never set eyes on. Anything but that, please. This has to be a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Now go on, Mr. Systems Manager. Be a devil and pass on my message to Leo Leica. Tell him it's about time he got in touch. <coughs> This is an automatic degenerated delivery status notification. The recipient can no longer receive mail. All incoming mail will be Subject. Message for L. Leica. Hi, Leo. Are there new tenants in your flat? In case you were still in Boston, I thought I should warn you. Don't be surprised if you get a massive electricity bill for this last year. I happen to be passing, and I've noticed that they leave the lights on all night long. Yours sincerely, Emmy. Hello? Yoo-hoo! Mr. Systems Manager, where are you? Don't I get my notification? Should I be worried? Or can I be hopeful? Dear Emmy, it is me using the electricity. I just got back from Boston. What I'd like to say, Emmy, is... Well, everything I might think of saying sounds so banal. The best I can do for tonight is this. I hope you are at least twice as well as I am. Adieu. Leo. So, Leo... You get back from Boston, usurp your nice systems manager, open Outlook, and oh, what do you know, there's an email from some woman called Emmy Rothner. The name is vaguely familiar. Ah, yes. Wasn't she the one you practically wrote into bed, like some kind of ace rat catcher of the cyber world? You very nearly had her, too. But then reason got the better of her, and she never turned up. Many months go by, both the woman and the frustration are long forgotten, and then she gets in touch out of the blue. And all you can do is hope she's well. I am not impressed. But don't let it bother you, really. I don't want to be a burden. Yours, Emmy. P.S. Please send me your nice systems manager again. I think I prefer him. I knew I shouldn't have written back, dear Emmy. You could never be a burden to me. You're a part of me. I carry you around with me, always, across all continents and emotional landscapes, living in my mind's eye as an illusion of perfection. That's how you existed for me in Boston, and that's how I have brought you back home with me. But, Emmy, in the meantime, my physical existence has moved on. I met someone in Boston. It's still early days, but we want to make a go of it. She's thinking about moving over, taking a job here. Emmy, on that dreadful night many months ago, when our first and last meeting failed, I cruelly broke off our virtual romance. It still doesn't have a future, particularly not now, Emmy. Let's cherish what we had and not ruin it. Good night from me, Leo.
Subject. A fitting conclusion. Okay. I'll cherish what we had, my dear ex-email boyfriend, Leo. The thing about Cindy, I just bet she's called Cindy, is that you get the physical side. A real woman, not an illusion, is so much warmer. Am I right? I'll stop emailing, I promise. But do you mind if your dream girl asks for one last wish? I want one hour face to face with you. I have to see you at least once in my life. I do agree that we have no future together, Leo, but there could be a fitting conclusion. That's all I'm asking. Her name is not Cindy, it's Pamela. I know, it sounds pretty ghastly, but she doesn't look at all like a Pamela. Dear Leo, I like you so much for that email. Please forgive my sniping. I'm off to bed now. Sleep well. Yours, Emmy. Subject. All right then, let's meet. Yours, Leo. I can do Saturday at two o'clock. I'll be sitting at a small table near the bar at the Café Hubert, scene of our last non-meeting. Try your best to identify me. Do you remember how you described your three candidates that day? It just so happens I still have that email. Emmy number one had short, dark hair, which has grown a fair amount since then, of course. She is fine-featured, temperamental, with a dignified arrogance about her. Emmy two was tall and blonde with large breasts. I'm sure you'll remember her. And Emmy three was brunette, and your impression was that she was shy, medium height, and... Melancholic. Yours, Emmy one, two, or three. Dear Emmy, you've made it easy for me. By giving yourself the most interesting characteristics, you have finally admitted you are Emmy number one, which I presumed all along. As for me, well, I hope you're not going to be disappointed. I don't look particularly exciting, and I've got a cold. It's far too late for damage limitation, Leo. See you soon. Oh, and welcome to the world of real life encounters. Subject The Morning After. Dear Emmy, was it so awful? Why do you ask? You were there. You sat opposite your illusion of perfection for 67 minutes and smiled at her for at least 54 of them. There was a fair portion of embarrassment along the way, but it wasn't awful at all. And I hope your cold is better today. As I said, gargle with sage tea before you go to bed. Have a nice day, Emmy. Dear Emmy, all day today, while nursing my cold, I've been deleting drafts of emails in which I'm trying to describe what I thought about our meeting. No matter what I write, it sounds cliche. Let me try it the other way round. I'll tell you what you thought when we met at last. I'd say you felt you were sitting with a stranger who claimed to be Leo Laika, but didn't offer any proof. You didn't find this stranger disagreeable, he didn't have bad breath, nor did his eyebrows twitch, he was easy to be with, if a little hoarse. But nothing about him touched you or reminded you of Leo the email writer. None of your expectations were fulfilled, dear Emmy. Am I right? Dear Leo, okay, why don't I tell you how you felt when we met? Here goes dumbfounded. You barely let it show, but I know you just couldn't believe that I looked so different from how you had imagined me for so long. What a dreadful letdown to be confronted with the least interesting Emmy, the shy brunette, Emmy number three. As for my impressions of you, I thought... I thought you weren't really there. You concealed yourself from me. Our meeting in eight words, 
I was timid and you were closed up. Was that a disappointment? If I'm honest, yes. Our long correspondence had a little more substance. Emmy. P.S. Nice jacket, by the way. Blue suits you. Emmy, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Are you and Bernard still together? Of course. Why do you ask? Oh, you know, it's just a personal interest. Ah, oh, I see. Can I ask you something personal too, Leo? You said in the cafe that you were off to Paris for a few days. Is Pam going with you? She's already there. Oh, well, happy landings. Good night, Emmy. Subject: Last night. Dear you, I was thinking of you last night. I couldn't get to sleep. How are you? Love, Leo. Well, well, Leo. What a surprise! After our brief encounter and a month of silence, I never thought you'd steel yourself to write me another email. Which Emmy are you writing to? Your illusion of perfection, or the shy girl from the Cafe Uber? Much love, Emmy. I'm thinking of the Emmy. Who, with delicate fingertips, brushes imaginary strands of hair from her face every so often, and curls them behind her ears as if she were trying to free her eyes from a veil, as if she wants to see things more sharply at last. And I ask myself whether this woman is happy in her life. Dear Leo, if I were to get an email like that each day, I'd be the happiest woman in the world. Thanks, Emmy. But I'm sorry to say that happiness is not made of emails. I'll look for you later. Love, Leo. Emmy, I can't sleep, and I may be. Correction, I am just a wee bit drunk. I wanted to tell you something. I wanted to tell you that there's a particular point on my left hand. Roughly in the middle, is where the lifeline is crossed as it runs down to the artery. A point. When I look at it, the feeling makes me dizzy. It tingles. It warms me. It governs my pulse. Just one tiny little point. Thing is, Amy, in a certain cafe one day, something happened on my left palm where this point is. My hand. Was reaching for a glass of water, and another softer hand came toward it at the same time. For a millisecond, the soft tip of a finger breezing past rested on the palm of my hand as it reached for the glass. There was a moment of contact. I have stored it away. I can feel you, Emmy. Sleep well. Leo, that was so lovely. Where do you learn stuff like that? I recommend you close your fist around that point to keep it safe. Subject: Three whiskies. Dear Leo. My third whiskey wanted to know whether I am only attractive to you with a high claret to blood ratio. Given that with coffee and water only that day in the cafe, you seem to lack all interest in me physically. Do you know what I did to that third whiskey, Leo? I annihilated him. And now I am off to bed. Good night, or rather, good morning now. Dear Emmy, okay, there are a number of things that need an explanation, such as, why would you want me to be interested in you physically? What good would it do? And how's your marriage? And what do you now think about the circumstances that led up to our breakup? How could you forgive me? And how could you forgive Bernard? Have a nice day, Leo. P.S. Oh, and please tell your whiskey friend that I like you. With.